Okay. Thank you. This is Love in All the Damp Places by Nick Maynard. Uh, interior London Underground Train Evening Christmas Time. Gwen is a woman in her mid to late 40s, possibly 50s. She is sat on a packed London Underground train. Life and noise are happening around her as she sits. Everyone seems to be having a Christmas party but her. On her head, she has Christmas decorations but looks sad and tired. She's dressed in full length Mac and has a very full rucksack on her back, which makes her perch on the end of her seat. There's something of the librarian about her, middle aged spinster type. More people get onto the train and the camera cuts to a close-up of Gwen's face sandwiched between two male arses. As the train moves, she is battered between the bums like a tennis ball. The one to her left farts. We hear the sound and hear and see Gwen's reaction. As she turns her face away from the farting arse, the man to her right also turns, sticking his crotch into Gwen's face. She looks up to see its owner. He is a young, handsome man engrossed in his iPhone. Gwen's attention returns to the man's crotch. The train's motion is making the man's hip rock backwards and forwards. Gwen allows the crotch to bump into her face. As the rocking increases, Gwen opens her mouth and mimics giving the young man oral sex. A sleazy 1970s soundtrack like a Cadbury's Flake advert begins to play. The lighting changes. For a moment, we are lost in Gwen's fantasy. Then the train jolts. The man's crotch slams into Gwen's open mouth. The man looks down and Gwen looks up. Their eyes meet, but not in a good way. Gwen has the young man's penis in her mouth. She pulls back and turns her face and the man turns around. A woman sat opposite her who has been watching the whole time just looks at Gwen in disgust. Gwen tries to look away, but there are no more directions she can look in, so she decides to put on her makeup. She starts to apply lipstick. The train jolts and she draws lipstick up her nose. Not to be put off, she changes sides and begins to apply lipstick again. Once again, the train jolts and she draws lipstick up her other nostril. Looking like a clown, she tries to smudge it off. Now she looks like she's been hit in the face. This does not stop her. She has eyeliner to apply. Once again, with each eye, the train jolts and she draws crazy lines on her face. She tries best to smudge the lines. Interior London Underground Station, evening Christmas time. Gwen is off the train and walking through the station. We only see her from the back. Her walk is happy and confident. The strains of the Seekers song Georgie Girl plays. We see people's response to Gwen as she dances through the underground station. They seem shocked and repelled. We then see Gwen's face. She looks like someone has attacked her in the face with a cricket bat. Her lips and nose are red from the lipstick accidents and her eyes are black from the eyeliner accident. And they have now been enhanced with blusher and eyeshadow, but not in a good way. Gwen is oblivious to this and feels a million dollars as she steps out of the station to the street. Interior office Christmas party, evening Christmas time. An office Christmas party. The evening is just beginning and just a small number of people are milling around a large function room, looking like a cheap wedding night do with beige buffet and mobile disco. The girl from Ipanema is playing as Gwen enters. She sheds her rucksack and Macintosh. She is sporting a long 1970s frock reminiscent of Beverly in Abigail's party. She looks around the room, which is bleak, with the hope of noticing something, someone or someone noticing her but there is no one looking. Gwen decides to go over to the bar. Interior office Christmas party, bar evening Christmas time. Gwen is at the bar. It's quite busy and she's being jostled. Eventually she gets to the bar. She looks up and sees herself in the mirror. She gets out a handkerchief and tries to sort out her makeup. The job's too big and she goes to the toilet. Interior, office Christmas party, ladies' toilet, evening Christmas time. Gwen is sorting her face out in the mirror. The toilet is busy with people, all seeming to have friends and knowing everybody, but ignoring Gwen. Interior, office Christmas party, evening Christmas time. Cut back to the main room. A little while later, time has passed. Gwen is stood at the back of the room with some fruit punch in a plastic glass. The drink has been embellished with umbrellas, swizzle sticks and fruit. The party has now come alive a little. Gwen, is ha Gwen happily surveys people having a good time. A man, Richard, has appeared next to Gwen. He is in his late thirties, early forties, possibly, but has a good ten years young. But a good ten years younger than Gwen. 
She notices him and neatens herself. She then gives out a coquettish laugh, which attracts Richard's attention. Richard, quite tall, looks down at Gwen and smiles. There is a pause. Richard nervously faces forward again. For a long moment, both Gwen and Richard return to their previous position of facing forward and surveying the action. Without warning, Gwen laughs again, louder and more forceful than before. Richard repeats his smile. There is another awkward pause. MB, the delivery suggests that is deadpan and emotionless. This is nice. Is it? I think so. I've never been to one of these before. I have. I come every year, let my hair down. I watch in Reading. That's nice. Is it? I don't know. I've never been to Reading. They have a festival. What sort of festival? Music. That's nice. Have you been? No. Oh. I don't normally drink. I think it's a nice drink. Do you? Yes. Although my experience in these matters is limited. I'm not a drinker, you see. Not that I have a problem with it. I don't want you to think I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> what? An alcoholic? I don't want you to think I'm one, because I'm not. I hardly ever drink. No, me neither. Uh, I'm more of a coffee and tea person myself. Which do you prefer? Tea. Me too. You work in an organisation like this all year and hardly ever talk to anyone. And now look at us. Yes. Uh, which department do you work in? HR. The Madhouse. We're all, all a little mad in there. Bonkers. Absolutely barking. Mad we are. Mad. I work in logistics. Oh, logistics. Yes. Is it nice? I don't know. What is logistics? I don't know. But you work there? I only started last week. Before that, I used to work in Reading. Oh, of, of course. <laughs> Silly me. Are you new? No, I've been here ten years. Man and boy, only I'm not a man or a boy. I'm not a transvestite. I think you mean transgender. They don't call them transvestites anymore. Don't they? I don't think so. Question is, if you've only been here a week, have you earned the Christmas party? Oh, I don't know. Nobody said anything. Do you think it matters? <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> that was funny. I once entered a talent competition on holiday at Butlins. I went with my mother before she died. Couldn't really go with her after she died, could I? <laughs> that would be weird. Yeah, very weird. I don't think I'd have been allowed in if I brought a corpse with me to Butlins. I'm sure they're very particular about things like that. I should imagine so. The chalets were very clean. Spotless. What? It's what my mum always says. Spotless. Spotless? Spotless. And they were. What happened? Did you win? No. Oh. Are you married? No. Are you married? No. Are you seeing anyone? No, no. Are you seeing anyone? No. But... I used to date one of the casuals, but it didn't end well. Too casual? No, too familiar. What about you? No, I've never dated a casual or a familiar. No, I meant, have you ever dated? Once. Just the once? Just the once. Oh, you surprised me. Although I've only known you a relatively short space of time. A few minutes, to be precise. Indeed. But that matters not. Must confess, I feel rather drawn to you. Do you? You have passion about you. Oh, do I? Working in HR as I do, you recognise these things in people. Oh, I never knew. It's like you exude a sexual chemistry. I'm finding very hard to resist. Oh, dear. I feel like I want to rip your clothes off and kiss you all over. Goodness. Please don't blame yourself. This is not your fault. I've been told that I bring this out in people. Men, people. Oh, I see. Do you? Do you really? At this point? 
men would naturally run a mile. Can I ask you something personal? If you like. Can I be so bold as to ask you how you'll be spending your Christmas? With my mother. That's nice. I suppose. Do you always spend Christmas with your mother? Is it a tradition? Yes. Well, you could say that. Apart from this one time when I went on a mini break. Hmm. What was that like? I wouldn't recommend it. Not at Christmas. Did you miss your mother? Mm, not really. I spend Christmas with Mr Tibbs. Oh. Is he a gentleman friend? No. He's a cat. Well, I like cats. I no longer speak to my father because of him. Oh, dear. Mr Tibbs came between us. Is that because he's allergic? No, he's a Presbyterian. I wouldn't normally do this. And please feel free to say no. Yes. I haven't asked you yet. Oh, sorry. Would you like to spend Christmas? Yes, yeah, yes. With me? I'm sure Mother will understand. I feel reckless abandon. Passion like ours should never be denied. You have to grab it with both hands. Yes. And never let it go. No. Should we kiss? I don't know. What's the protocol for something like this? There is no protocol. Passion knows no bounds. We are entering new frontiers, you and I. What's your name? Mystery. Oh, that's nice. I've never met a mystery before. No, I'm mystery, not mystery. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> So, Aaron, you were listening there. What What are your thoughts from listening to it? Well, a couple things. Um, I mean, there's some housekeeping stuff, but like, I'm curious. I'm curious of whether or not this whole, with the kind of like dream sequence situation in the beginning, if this is something that actually is happening, or if like all of a sudden we get to page twelve, and it's she's just standing there staring at this person. Um, and I, the contrast of her having these thoughts and then being in HR is quite fascinating too, because I don't know, like, it's quite pushing an envelope for being some, like this conversation is pushing the envelope for someone in HR. Um, so I think that's really interesting. And also the mention of the 1970s a few times, I was curious if, if this actually takes place in the 1970s or there's just like a vibe of the 1970s. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh just like the oh i also thought al 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 cro al -co frolic was really really f cute mm. um i've never heard that before um that was clever um just like housekeeping stuff um you know i would look into like some the formatting a little bit more and um, the beginning should like descriptions of characters and actions being separated and things like that. Watch some spelling, little minor, minor spelling errors, errors. But um, it's quite interesting. Um, I'm curious. I liked the contrast of the two characters, and it was like short conversation, but really, I thought it was. It kind of gave me the like the beginning with all this information. Um, it kind of has like an idea of maybe it started as a novel and maybe it was going to be a play and now it's like a film I think um but I don't know I think I think it's got a lot of potential I think it's interesting I'd like to see what's happening next okay so cleaning up the formatting stuff is important sure, absolutely Ian what are your thoughts I uh when I read it for the first time, I, I struggled with that conversation between the two characters. I wasn't quite sure how it was working, but now I, I hear it read, it, it makes a lot more sense. And you could see actually where you know they could be quite an interesting development between these two people. I think there's something between them that could lead us to you know somewhere quite different. Um, so that I think that, that that's changed my mind quite a bit on that, and I like that idea of it. Um, I thought the, uh, that we've we've touched on the idea that. The first three pages, a lot of description, which could easily be reduced down to some, you know, abbreviated, you know, direction, some abbreviated action. Particularly that 
the two, three, and four scenes that are all in the bar. I mean, we just that could be captured in two or three lines, a couple of lines description of what's going on there and give us, you know, a couple of directions. So I think, you know, we could get to the conversation much quicker. Um, and I think I like what Aaron was saying about the idea. I hadn't thought about that till she mentioned that that first sort of train thing could be much, she's elaborating a, uh, an imagination rather than an actual event that's going on. You know, she's traveling to this party and she's wondering what's happening you know, it's maybe more in her imagination. I like that idea, Erin, that, that, what, what you said there. So, yeah, it's 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 grown on me as we've read it, I think. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I was a bit, I was struggling with it to start with when I first read it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Rachel? Yeah, I agree with you there, Ian. Um, it was interesting because the conversation was a little awkward, but it's obviously supposed to be. And the word nice so often is... <laughs> I think could be really comedic, could be, uh, I don't know. Um, uh, I've I picked up on that a lot. I think the um, oral sex situation at the start could be really comedic. It could be repulsive. I guess it depends how you want to see it on the, how you want to see it on the screen. And obviously you've given us a lot of description there. Um, yeah, uh, uh, and all of that sort of page one stuff. It, I would be interested to see what what sort of went on with that, and I suppose it depends what audience you're targeting this to, and what journey you want to take with it, where it's going to go, um, as well. Yeah, um, I found it quite funny, and I think I think there's something interesting going on here. I, I really, I kind of wanted to read on when I got to page ten, um, the mystery situation. I wasn't sure about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I just want to echo what everybody else has said, really. Um, the format needs to be sorted out for sure. And you can get lots of, um, you can read lots of first and second draft scripts on the internet of films that have been made. Try not to read uh, scripts that have been written after the edit. Uh, they always write a script post-edit. Um, to kind of say what we've shot um, they're not good to to, to read uh, from purposes of a writer you want to try and get hold of first or second draft scripts um, also try and use um, some formatting um, a formatting app that will help you uh, also with getting your formatting right um, the cheapest ones are Celts uh, which I personally don't like Celts very much but some people love it um, fade in is a cheap version of the industry standard, which is final draft. Um, fade in is is brilliant if you can't afford final draft. Fade in works absolutely great. Uh, otherwise, you can get um, templates for Word that will do the same trick, but it's not it's not quite as easy uh, doing it on Word. Um, but having said that, a um, lot of description, which I think yeah, everybody said needs to really be cut down. Um, and again, if you start reading books about or information on the internet about formatting, you'll see that scripts are kind of quite sort of um, um, instructional rather than too sort of prosaic. You know, the, there's not a lot of prose in a script in the same way that there is in a novel. Um, uh, so, I mean, I just, I just quickly wrote the first like the first I would say paragraph but that's an entire paragraph uh, go all the way down to the bottom of the page so what I would consider to be the first paragraph um, which is a small section of that at the top so you've got interior London underground train evening Christmas time so that already tells us we're on London underground train you don't need to repeat that in your description so all you really need to do is say train is packed with Christmas party, make merrymakers or people on their way home at Christmas time. Um, then all you do is you, you you really shorten all the description of her. So it's Gwen, 40s slash 50s, um, backpack on her back, you know, raincoat, backpack on her back, squeezed into her seat. Um, and then you and then you have a shot which needs to be a separate paragraph, which is close on two male asses which sandwich her face in a crush of people that's how i would have written that first bit about describing her um so it's just about thinking about compressing it all really 
down to the absolute essential stuff. Um, but I, having said that, it really does paint a picture of what's going on, which I which I quite like. Um, and you get a sense that this woman is a bit sort of out of left field, really. Um, so that then by the time you get to the, uh, to the dialogue, um, you're wondering, how is this going to go? You know, and, and so, um, I like the dialogue a lot. I think the dialogue does really work. I can really see it is that scenario where you're sitting you're standing in a room full of people that are partying. They're people you work with, you don't really ever socialize with. And you're kind of a bit out on a, you know, sort of, do I talk to them? Don't I talk to them? It's that kind of, unless you're completely wasted, of course, in which case you probably, <laughs> you probably don't care. Um, and uh, what else did I write? Uh, for my, uh, yeah, I love the humor, but I will say, I was confused as to when when it was. What time in time is it? Is it the 1970s? Well, there's a mention of an iPhone. There's a lot of reference. Yes, it's confusing. There's a lot of references to the 1970s, but then there's a reference to the iPhone and there's the transgender reference, which in the 1970s, it was still transvestite. Hmm. Uh, it, there wasn't any... Uh, you know the, the 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 language for it wasn't the same, mm. so I'm guessing it's now, and I'm guessing I don't know Nick if you are an older person who remembers the 1970s and and, and or maybe you just really like the 1970s, which is fine. Um, I don't know that it just threw me a little bit. That just threw me a little bit. It would be good to know. Yeah, Aaron. I wanted to kind of also add the thing that I thought was really um, intriguing. I don't, I don't know if it was purposeful, but like, um, like Rachel was saying, like um, the kind of explicit stuff, it doesn't read that way later. So it's like, is this supposed to be some sort of like raunchy comedy or is it supposed to have like, is it, you know, like, is it supposed to kind of have this contrast of like, how far she pushes the envelope in her head as opposed to you know and and it almost feels like with the 70s references and then you're saying now that you're saying um oh yeah there's some modern day references it's like is this kind of like is it one of those like vibes where it's supposed to kind of have its it's almost like its own genre in a way that like it kind of like has that feel where you're like um, cause initially there's a movie called Buffalo 66 with Christina, App, um, Christina Ricci and the, it takes place in another time period, but like, there's like this vibe. And so I was, I'm trying to like figure out like the tone of this a little bit too. I'm kind of like, I'm really intrigued about what the tone is. And, um, so I don't know. You've made me think, anything, you've but. made me think of a couple of things actually saying that. About the time thing, um, uh, she's if she is how old is she? She's mid to late forties, possibly fifties. That's still too young to remember the seventies. I remember the seventies because I'm in my late sixties. <laughs> but some people are obsessed with different eras. And some people are obsessed with it. exactly. Um, but the yeah. other thing is, so so the Cadbury's Flake reference. The Cadbury's Flake advert hasn't been used for a very long time. Hardly anyone will get that reference. I didn't know what it was. I mean, it's iconic for the time, wasn't it? It's an it's iconic not, for the time, mm -hmm. but it's not now. No. Um, the other thing is I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about, and it's not really a massive concern. It works when you describe it, that the business where she's, um, she's kind of making out that she's giving this guy a blow job, but, but, um, is that's in her imagination, isn't it? So, I so, so I think that's in her imagination. I mean, that's we haven't, I too. we haven't, yeah. we haven't heard she's made, she's doing the act, going through the actions, but we haven't seen his zipper come out, mm. come down, his penis come out. But there is a mention of his penis in her mouth. Yeah, which makes me think: is she, if she's imagining this? then there needs to be a clearer sort of delineation between 
what's the imagination and what's the reality i don't know it's just a little what is this going to be rated then like it's I mean... confusing let's just say yeah. it's it's not it should it's not that it shouldn't be there it's that it's confusing as it's written at the moment that's well, the also i would i would suggest to look at the the sweetest thing um regarding that particular piece of information um i would suggest looking at the the film the sweetest thing with Cameron Diaz and Christina Applegate and see if you can find a pdf of that because that might be helpful too yeah yeah but I, I agree it's got a lot going for it you know uh, uh mm -hmm. and the, I think the comedy is definitely there isn't it the humor is definitely there mm -hmm. mm, the yeah, cat it, is wonderful <laughs> yeah it's really interesting. I'd like to see in the next draft of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. We will move on.